Hello, and welcome to Avatar Yoga, if you can't tell. I'm very happy to be hosting yoga with you today. I am Riffling Designs, and I will be your host. So to get started, again, let me post in chat. We've got a playlist for you. It's also down here, if you want. And if you have something else you'd like to play, go right ahead. And then we're going to get started. So let me move on down. Isn't it a beautiful costume? I made this myself. I do love cosplay. I'm referring to designs as designs for everything, including, of course, cosplay. So I'm glad to be sharing Avatar yoga with you. This is from Avatar The Last Airbender. I am cosplaying Aang, and I am going to be leading you on an elemental yoga journey. So as we go through today, You'll want to have probably a block, or if you don't have a block, a paper towel roll, or a large book, or a sturdy box, just to make sure that you can do things correctly. I also have videos on using aids like this on my YouTube. It's uh, just search Riffwing Designs and you'll be able to find me there. So first off, find a comfortable seat. If you'd like, you can pretend that you have your air balloon that you're sitting on and your hands can be in this Anjaya Mudra, which is similar to prayer pose, or you can have them on your knees or whatever's comfortable for you. And just notice where you are as I go through the introduction here. So I teach what I call Bob Ross style yoga, where you do what works for you. All types of yoga could work for all types of people, but you are one particular person and you are special and you are valued. So you have to find your own. Yoga is all about listening to your own body and being comfortable in your body. So if it does not feel comfortable, if you feel pain, if you don't feel like it's right for you, any sh sharpness, tingling, numbness, uh, any sharp, sharp pains, please back off again. Do what's right for you. And again, I love to teach yoga in usually the basic level. So we're going to do a little bit of basics and a little bit more advanced. And there is no wrong way to do yoga. If you're sitting here breathing, you are already doing yoga. And that's all you have to do. You can always come back to this seated pose, just focusing on your breath. Or if, you're, if you know it, you can go into child's pose as well. And again, I am Riffwing Designs. I am Riffwing Designs everywhere. I'm so happy to be hosting you all here. And we're again gonna be doing some avatar elemental yoga. To start off with, we're gonna work on our mindful breathing. So now that you've kind of felt where you are and you're nice and cozy, from whatever pose that you're in, you can either let your eyes gently close or you can keep them open, it's up to you. And just start mindfully breathing. And we're going to go through all four elements. We're starting with air, so notice your breath. Notice the temperature of your breath in your mouth and your nose. Notice the feeling of your rib cage as it expands when you breathe in and compresses on the way out. Maybe even put your hands on your diaphragm. Notice in the in breath. Try to breathe from the diaphragm out and then exhale, push it in. Roll your shoulders back at a nice, strong posture. And if you'd like to start again, we're going to have that air focus. So you can start to even out your breath, taking a deep breath in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, back in, two, three, four, and out, and in, and out. And you can keep up this pace if it works for you. You can go slower, and you can go faster. Again, find your Bob Ross style. And if it works for you, on your next inhale, hold it at the top for two to four counts. Exhale, and try and hold it out. Inhale, hold, exhale, and hold. And continue doing the breathing pattern that works for you here. That last one is called box breath. 
I'm sure the airbenders would use it. Focus on the element of air. Again, if you're sitting on that air ball, keep the nice straight balance. Notice the air swirling around you. Maybe you have a fan on and the air conditioning is running. Maybe it's cool. And then start to come back to your normal breath if that's what works for you. Again, for any yoga pose, you can keep doing it as long as you want. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to pause and take as long as you need. So from here, we're going to set our intention. And intention is the idea behind why you're practicing today. For me, it's going to be connecting to the earth and the elements. But for you, it could be something like a prayer. It could be, I am strong. I want peace. Any idea that can bring you to a focus point throughout the practice. And if you need to, you come back to it. So set that intention now. And then what I do is we take our hands and we sweep them up, sweep them down on the exhale, inhale back up, hold them at the top, put your palms together, pull them down to your heart center, just like we had before. We're gonna take two breaths, one to cleanse and then another to set your intention. So big inhale and really loudly let it go. One more in and let it all go. And with that, let's begin our avatar journey. We're gonna begin by doing cat and cow. So if you're available, you can go on your hands and knees. If not, you can do this from your chair, no worries. So put your hands down, your hands and your knees should be shoulder width distance apart. And from here, just feel first, feel the ground beneath you. Look so that you're looking straight ahead. Your neck should be stable. And then on the exhale, you're going to go into like a little black cat, arching your back, pulling your shoulders over. And then the other way, look up, inhale, tailbone sticks out, exhale, cat, inhale, cat. For all of these, go at your own pace. Feel how your spine is warming up here. And remember to breathe. And if it's right for you, maybe you start to bring some movement in. Maybe you swing your hips. Maybe you lift your palms. If you've been with me before, you know that I love to do a little bit of stretching, looking at your tail, going back and forth, maybe even rocking in circles, warming up your wrists here, warming up your knees. You got this. Find what you need, and I always like to go into one of these little back bends first, but again, it may not be for you. I just like to warm up my spine here. And then go back into your child's pose. So this is your other resting pose. Feet are together, knees are wide. Set your bum down, hands out, lower your head, and breathe. At any time, you can return to child's pose to recharge your chakra. And so now we're going to go all the way to standing. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. So you can see all of me. Here we are at standing. So we're going to find mountain pose, which we're going to come to many times between our elements. Feet should be hip distance width apart or maybe a little wider, shorter, depending on you. Lift up your toes and set them down, shoulders back, arms out. <laughs> and palms open. Breathe here. Focus on the breath again, the air elements. Now we're going to do air swipes. If you've seen Avatar, you know they flow with the air when they're doing their dance. So here, start to just warm up by moving your arms in a way that you feel ties you to the element of air. So nice and flowy. Maybe you do some circles, maybe you stand still, like you're dancing through the little training tracks you need to do to become an airbender. Or maybe you're pretending you're slow dancing with your partner, that's totally fine too. And from here, maybe you start to plant your feet again, just loosen up your neck and shoulders. 
Then get your arms back into it. We're going to kind of do like a little wave, almost like the water bending here. But then go up and over. If you notice these cute little armbands that are on the airbender's outfits, hold your wings so they don't get too floppy. It's awesome. I learned a lot about their costumes while I was doing this. And notice I'm going deeper. You can go as big or as small as you want. And let's do some arm circles. So start small, getting those little wings flying. Maybe the other way. Maybe make them big. Again, your yoga, your size here. And the other way. And if you've been with me before, we always like to play trying to go opposite directions. Whew. Feel the wind. As you're going opposite, pretend this is like your little fan kite. Wait, that's the same direction. <laughs> there we go. And remember, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to have fun. Just do what works for you. All right, so now find anything else. Maybe you want a rag doll, just hang over. Let your head and your arms dangle. Again, noticing how it flows. <sighs> and then next, from here we're gonna inhale, slowly come up to standing, letting your neck and shoulders be last. Again, here we are, mountain pose, deep breath. We're gonna do our bird pose. Our bird pose in the air element is gonna be eagle. So for this, the first thing you can do is just stand there and hug yourself. And you can do a big hug and shoulders back and down. This is all you need. This is eagle. If you want to do more than that, you've seen me do it before. It's like the Macarena. You put your arms out, you put the right arm over top, and then you lift up and you put your palms together. Or from the right arm over top, you lift up and maybe you can twist and get your palms together. Find your eagle with your hands. Then lift your elbows a little bit. Shoulders back. Breathe here. This is arm eagle. Now leg eagle, you take the opposite leg. So we're taking left leg over and you can cross and stand here. Or you can try and twist your foot back and under. Remember, find the one that works for you. Now from here, remember those elbows are up, you're breathing. If you have the power, if it's in your ability, try to sink into a chair pose here. We're going straight into a very strong air move. As low as you can go, and then maybe you can crouch over. Whoop. Again, it's okay to, to fall, fall safely. And again, maybe you can even go into like a little handstand if that's available to you. Wherever you are, come back up, try to unwind, feel the air. Come down, shake it out. That was eagle. Great job. Other side, mountain, breathe. You've got this. Now we take left arm over top. Remember, you can hug yourself again. Or you can cross once and come up. Or you can cross once, come up and try and twist more. Getting palms together. Lifting elbows. Your eagle on the other side. And if you can, Take the right leg over top, crisscross and stand, or maybe you try and tuck that foot behind your leg. Lifting elbows, standing straight, eagle other side. And maybe again you sink down into that chair pose, only if it feels good, or at least not bad. <laughs> maybe you hunch over and do a little fold. Maybe you go into that little handstand if you've got your crow or anything else that's in your wheelhouse. And wherever you are, you come back up. Unwind, feeling the air. This looks so cool. I am so happy with this and I'm glad that you're all here. Come back to standing, shake it all out. All right, we have done air. Now we're gonna do sky bison, which of course is my favorite. <laughs> and um, so what we're gonna do is down dog, right? Come back down to all fours, tuck your toes. And actually, I'm gonna adjust this here. And remember to hydrate if you need to. So for your downward facing dog, tuck your toes, hands and, and wrists very strong, pushing your tail up. You wanna try and get a little bit of a triangle shape here, looking between your legs, about here. All right, pedal it out. Feel your first dog. If this doesn't feel good, go to all fours. You can do it from there. 
So sky buys and flows. From here, we're gonna lift up your right leg, shake it out. Step it through to low lunge. This is all we're doing. If you wanna go higher, go higher. We're just gonna do low lunge here. You can drop your knee if you want, or you can hold it strong. Just breathe here in this runner's lunge. And then keeping your right hand down, maybe you open up. Do a little bit more air element. Breathe in here. Focusing on twist. Step back. Plank. If you have it available, lower down chaturanga only halfway. Come up to up dog and back down to down dog. Again, at any time, if you need to go knees, chest, chin, feel free. If you need to do it on your hands and knees, feel free. And then other side, left leg up. Shake it out. Step it through low lunge. Holding here, getting cozy. And then maybe you keep that left hand down and do a twist the other way. Breathing. Plant your hand, step back, go through another flow if that's what's available for you. I'm gonna do a knees, chest, chin, cobra, and then push back. And you can go into your down dog, you can go into your child's pose, you can go into your table from here. If you like, feel free to do another one. I'm gonna take us from wherever that resting pose is, we're gonna go into the water element now. Since surprisingly, it's been 15 minutes. So we're gonna walk our hands forward, lower yourself all the way down. We're going to crocodile. Crocodile is hands down, arms crossed in front of you, and you just lay there and breathe. And if your head is to one side, maybe you just turn it in about a, a few seconds. So crocodile, focus on your breath. Maybe take your legs up, move them side to side. Notice how the air feels flowing against your feet. Feel the air on your bare feet. Just like airbenders feel air on their bald head, feel the air on your legs here. And then come to stillness. Maybe if you had your head going one way, go the other way now. And breathe. Crocodile pose. So we're coming into water. Cora's natural element here. First, we're gonna slowly come on up. If you wanna do a flow, we're going to standing, back to mountain pose. So if you're with me, we got our down dog. Step or hop forward. And then come on up to standing. Breathe in here. Okay. Again, take a drink if you need it. I'm gonna pull my mat a little bit this way because if you've seen my toes come off, you've gotta to adjust on the fly in yoga. Never say it's okay, change things if you need to. So for mountain again, planting your feet, hip distance apart, toes spread out and down, shoulders down, palms out, stand strong. Feel the avatar, shift phases from air to water. Now we're gonna go into the water flow. So just like we did the air flow before, this time it's water. So if you were dancing like that for the air, maybe now start to feel more splishy splashing. Feel the water. You don't have to do what I'm doing. <laughs> I love this dance though. You see me do it all the time. It's a great wrist warm up. Okay. Pretend you're bending, flowing with the water. This reminds me a lot of my Deku leg day one. I did Deku for My Hero Academia. In all the moves, you felt so strong because you were channeling the energy of the character. Do what feels good for you here. Feeling the water flow from your hands. There you go. Just a couple more seconds here. And then come back up. Hands up, lower down. One more time, sweep them up. Come to your palms, pull them down to your heart. Breathe here. Mountain pose. We're going to go to seated here. If you want with me, you can take your hands up, pull them down, widen your stance. We're gonna do like a little slow lower into your yogi squat. Again, if it works for you. Now, if you have that block and you wanna sit on your block, Again, that's available. And there's more on that in my aid yoga on YouTube. So wherever you are, hold that yogi squat if you can, and if not, just come on to seated, breathe. Remember, you still have the element of air now. 
and we're going into water. So lowering down, <laughs> gracefully or not, we're going into Lord of the Fishes. First, put your feet out in staff pose. Toes come back, nice and strong. Breathing. Imagine that you're at the seaside and you're at the beach, the water splashing against your feet. And as Lord of the Fishes, you're going to transform and begin to come into the water. So for that, pull one leg up. Okay, I'm taking my right leg in, knee in. Sit strong here. And if this is all you can do, here's your Lord of the Fish. Or if you can, you can cross your leg over, cross your foot over your leg, and sit here. For the last option, if you can twist deeper, take your arm. So I have my right arm over my right leg, and I'm twisting to the left. Hand out, looking over. And if it feels good, you can bend that lower leg into like more of a twisted lord, or you can keep it straight. Find what works for you. Sitting up straight here. On the inhale, lengthen. On the exhale, maybe twist a little more. Focus on your breathing. Imagine sitting in the water now, it's lapping up against you. Up to about your hips. Lord of the Fishes. Slowly unwind, come back to staff pose. Now your splish splash taking a bath here, maybe you shake it out. And then we're gonna do the other side. So take your left knee in, sit up straight and stay here if that's for you. Maybe you take that foot over, and then again, maybe you twist the other way. Breathe in here. Remember, inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Lord of the fishes, other side. Feel that water cooling you. And when you're ready, untwist. Maybe you need to do a little fold here. Or maybe you need to do another stretch. So we've done Lord of the Fishes. Now we're gonna go into Mermaid, which is another one of my favorites. So from seated, bend both of your knees one way and just come to your side. You're making a little pinwheel with your legs. So I have one knee out, the other knee out, and that knee is touching my foot like this. If this doesn't feel good, find what does. Maybe you're sitting on a cushion. Whatever works for you here. So for mermaid, this is also called deer. <laughs> so from here, again, just move your spine a little bit. Feel how your sits bones are touching the ground. And then we're gonna face towards the front leg, okay? Sit up straight so you're having that spinal twist again. But now pretend you're like the little mermaid on the rock singing the song. Scoop and swoop, you are the mermaid in the surf splashing up against you. Go at your own speed. Maybe some of them you get your tail flopping. Maybe it goes this way. Do whatever, have fun with it, you're a mermaid. I'm not gonna sing for you. I've sang in some of my panels, but I'm not gonna do that for you today. Sorry. All right, you've got your mermaid on this side. Now, there's a really cool break dancey pose that you might be able to do where you plant your hands and you just kind of swoop and then all of a sudden you're on the other side. I have no idea how to do it. So if you want to have more fun, try that. But eventually you're going to land. So your knees are pointing the other way. The other knee is tucked into that toe here. And again, first just feel those sits bones. Notice how it works. Maybe again, you need that cushion. Maybe you need to adjust your sitting. That's fine. And wherever you are, then twist your torso towards the front leg. Sit up tall like the mermaid in the surf, and then feel it splash. Maybe even doing the dive with your hands. Whatever you need for your water element. And again, maybe here we go. You splish that mermaid tail. You kick it up. We're just having fun and moving your body in ways that it doesn't when it's sitting at the computer all day. That's the fun of yoga. All right, we've got mermaid. Come back, pull your knees in, and then we're going to go to table again. If you want, you can do your down dog flow. We're gonna do a table flow if you're with me, but feel free to do a normal vinyasa here. So from table again, hands under your shoulders, knees under hips, shoulder width and hip width distance apart, okay? 
from whatever flow you're doing, we're gonna walk our hands forward into a baby, baby plank, a knees down plank, hold that, then lower down. Once your chest is done, put your hands underneath your shoulders, lift it up into baby cobra, and then push back into child's pose. That's all it is. We're gonna do four of these. If you're doing your down dog flows, go, go, go. If you're with me, tabletop, walk your hands forward, plank, hold it for a breath, lower, cobra, child's pose. Now for me, I'm not moving my knees. This is not a wide knee child's pose. And go at your own pace here. Tabletop, plank, lower, cobra, one more. One more of whatever it is for you. And when you're done, feel free to hydrate. We have now transitioned through the water kingdom. We're gonna go into Fire Nation. And you know the most fiery water move is Navasana Boat Pose. Some people fear this for boat. Sit up. Pull your knees in. You can stay here and just lower down, or you can lift up your feet and hold here, or you can grab the back of your thighs and go here, or you can straighten your legs. There's so many options. Wherever you are, hold that boat. Hands can go up, legs can go up, hands can go wide. Hold the boat, breathe. Remember the air element. You are the boat. And again, when you feel like you need to, you're gonna lower slowly to the ground. With each breath, slowly lower that boat. Did you feel the fire as you entered the fire nation? Oh my gosh. Breathe. Ooh. Okay, so when you're ready, we're gonna come back to standing, back to our mountain pose. Fire is going to be the hardest, as is expected. Lifting those toes, feeling the connection to the earth, feeling your breath. Okay, inhale, hands up. Exhale, another yogi squat, this time just for a moment. Then push back up, putting your fingers to a little arrow, like a volcano. One more time, down. One more time, up. <laughs> All right, this is stupid fun, I love it. Now. What we're gonna do is fire breath. Again, if this feels right for you. So for fire breath, and I'm just gonna come here so you're close to the mic, um, but keep standing. So for fire breath, you're gonna breathe fast. Do not hyperventilate, but you wanna do like 10 to 20 seconds of fast breathing. So if you have a hearing aversion to, to breathy voices, here you go, don't listen. So for fire breath, it's like this. <sighs> Now I'm a mouth breather. If you do it through the nose, it sounds even more hardcore. Here we go. <laughs> so 10 sniff breaths or 10 mouth breaths. Build the fire within. And then catch your breath. That's fire breathing. You can imagine Zuko doing this whenever he gets angry, right? And notice the stillness of the normal air breath, how it can calm you after that fire breath. The elements work together. Now we're gonna be going into our squats. So we're gonna take our feet wide. Again, only if this works for you, but we're gonna be going side to side. So our knees are bent, and if this is good, you can just do a little shifting of the weights. But if you're with me, and you've got your really nice workout pants on, Keep lowering down until you get to these cool like ninja squats. <sighs> Feel the fire building in your chest, in your legs. Pull in your guts. Feel those abs engage. And again, your hands can be on the ground here. Your hands can be the blocks. Definitely use blocks here if you need to. Don't feel like you have to do what I'm doing because you have to find yours. Once you get tired, stop. <laughs> All right. And we're gonna come back up slowly. <sighs> Stretch those legs out in whatever way works for you. Maybe do a forward fold here, just breathe. Maybe bend those knees, a really nice deep one. We could do a girl up pose here where your hands come underneath your toes. 
Breathe here, keep those elbows and knees bent and just feel the stretch, let your neck go. You'll feel some of that fire in your legs still in Gorilla. And then when you're ready, we're gonna come all the way to mountain again. Ready, inhale up, feel the strength, feel the fire. Hands together, pull them to your heart. Catch your breath. Now, as we did before, this time we're doing the fire circle. So the fire circle, your hands are like this. They come up, clap. Building the fire energy. Notice how I'm doing a little squat here so it all comes together. If you want, you can do hua, hua, fire in. You see the giant flame as you're getting ready to fire. <sighs> Breathe. Feel it grow. And then get ready. We're going to stop in the center in three, two, one, bend your knees, hands together, feel the heat building within your hands, and then we're gonna push it out like Kamehameha, right? Maybe you do a side to side. Fire breath here. One more time. Here we go. Awesome. Whew. Take a drink if you need it. <laughs> All right, next we're gonna do the warrior poses. Because obviously Fire Nation is the warrior nation, although we can argue any other one fights just as well. So if you haven't done these before, we have tutorials, you can find them again at my YouTube or anybody else's channel for that matter. We're gonna go through and we're gonna start standing. If you wanna go from down dog, feel free. Going into warrior one, you step your right foot forward, knee bent, back foot 45 degree angle. Modify your stance if you need to. Feel if it needs to be wider or wider. <laughs> I usually like to bring my front foot out a little to keep my balance. So these are your warrior legs. Twist your torso so it's facing parallel. Your hips are twisted here. And you can stand here with your hands near your hips, or you can inhale, arms up. You can bring your hands together, you can keep them wide. Whatever you want in your warrior stance, it doesn't matter. Feel what works for your warrior one. For warrior two, you twist your torso and open your body. I shifted my heel a little bit too, that's fine. Look over your front fingertips. Maybe look back, keep the shoulders even. You don't want to be too wobbly, right? Focus on keeping the front knee bent. Breathe, feel the fire. Now, in the dancing dragon that Zuko does, he keeps his fists here, so maybe make fists, feel the power, right? And then if you rotate up, hua, hua, it's almost like a punching move, right? You can do that a couple times. Moving your heels, and hold. Now, reverse warrior. From here, you're gonna be flipping your front palm, and then lean back, looking up if it feels good. You're gonna feel the burn in the back leg, keep that knee bent, and then come forward so your arm now goes onto your knee. Extended side angle, <laughs> which is hard for you to see my face here, so this is extended side angle. <laughs> uh, breathe here. And then if you want, you can plant your hands and go through your flow to your down dog. Or if you're with me, come back up to warrior two and then come back to mountain pose at the back of your mat. If you're doing your flow, get to your dog. Breathe there and then come up to the other side. So if you're standing with me, left leg forward this time. If you're in your dog, go in the same way, lifting that left leg, kicking through, finding your warrior one other side. Hands up, front knee bent, back foot 45 degree angle or whatever feels right for you. Breathe. Find the place that your hands need to be for your strong fire warrior. And then I'm just turning so you can see me. For warrior two, you open up and your hips turn to face out. Now you're looking over the left fingertips. Back knees just a little bent, breathing here. Now we're gonna make fists and go and twist our torso, doing our dancing dragon. You gotta make the sound effects, right? Okay, back to your warrior two, breathe. 
Reverse warrior, flipping the front palm, coming up. Breathe. Extended side angle, coming to back down, front forearm on your left leg, sweeping your right leg over, your right arm over. Breathing here. And again, here you can plant your hands and go through your flow. Where you're with me, you need to come back up to warrior two and then step back to the edge of your mat. Go to your down dog if you're doing your flow or maybe find child's pose. This is quite the flyer. Get a drink if you need to. We're doing great for time. We'll do that one more time. So if you're in your dog, come back forward with your right leg. If you're with me, stepping forward with your right leg. Bending your back and front knees, left back foot down, 45 degree angle. Twist your torso, facing forward. Warrior one, breathe here. Maybe put your arms in a different position this time. Roll the shoulders back and down. Warrior two, fists. Do you open your torso? Good. Breathing. Warrior three, or not warrior three, reverse warrior. If you notice, I like to put my hand behind my back here. It feels really good. Then you're gonna sweep into your side angle. Everybody, if you're, if you're able to here, find your block. Maybe plant your hand and do a little open twist. Breathing. And then wherever you are, if you want to do your flow, plant your hands, go back to your down dog if you're with me. Come back up with strength. Feel the fire in your, in your abs. Warrior two. And then step to the back of your mat. Shake it out. If you're in your flow, find your down dog. From that down dog, you're going to be stepping forward with the left foot. If you're with me, same thing. Stepping forward with the left foot. Coming into your warrior one. Maybe again, different arm pose here. Back leg is, has your foot at a 45 degree angle, knees slightly bent. Front knee bent more. Breathing. Make those fists. Warrior two. Breathe. Notice how you've opened up your torso. Shoulder straight. Flip your front hand. Reverse warrior. Breathing deeply here. And then coming to extended side angle. Remember to have that block if you need it. After a couple breaths, we're gonna go into planting your hand, opening up. Twisted side angle. Great work, you feeling the fire? Because I definitely am, Oof. And then wherever you are, either plant your hands and go through your flow again, or with me, come up strongly to your warrior. Step back to the back of your mat. If you're in your flow, find your down dog or your child's pose. We are done with the warrior flows. Whew. Shake it out, nice work. Oh, <laughs> it's not called the Fire Nation for nothing, right? But we have one more warrior we have yet to conquer before we can go and slow down and find the Earth Kingdom. So for that, we're going to Warrior 3. This is our peak pose. If you need to have, it's going to be a balanced pose, so if you need to have a chair or a wall or something to hold on to to give you support, please find that now. From Warrior 3, you're going to find from standing, so again, if you're in your down dog, you can come back up to mountain pose. From standing, you're going to take your hands to your heart center or maybe hands to your hips. And feel, again, your weight. I'm going to do it this way. So feel your weight. And you're going to shift your weight to your right foot. And if all you do is like do a little jig and stand on one leg, you know, that's, that's step one. We're going to do tree on earth. Okay? But then for warrior three, what you do is you hinge your hips. Now your standing knee has to be bent, don't lock it. You're hinging your hips here and you're just coming forward. And notice how I'm just floating my foot here, that's fine. If you need to, you can also use a tall block. So you're hinging forward. This is what your warrior three can look like. This is what your warrior three can look like. This is what your warrior three can look like. This is what your warrior three can look like. Flex your foot wherever you are, find your warrior. Maybe you're holding on to the wall or holding on to a chair, that's fine. Feel the fire, focus the energy, keep your standing knee bent. Notice how your body is talking to you in warrior three. For three, two, and one. Find your way back down. 
If you want to do another flow here, go ahead. And then come right back up on the other side if you're doing that flow. If you're with me, I was on my right foot. We're going to switch to our left. If you're doing your flow, come on up, mountain pose. We're all going to find our weight in our left foot. First, just shifting maybe a little bit and starting to hinge at the hips, keeping with standing knee bent, using whatever aid you need to find your warrior three. Your hips are parallel to the ground. Foot is flexed, looking down, finding strength. Don't lock the standing knee, breathe. Find your warrior, feel the fire. I do not recommend the fire breath here though. There we go, breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Find your way back down. Woo. If you want, you can do one more flow here. Take a drink, and we're all gonna come back to mountain pose in about 10 seconds. All right, mountain pose. Feet are down, grounding to the earth. Shoulders back, breathe in here. We're gonna do another yogi squat, so inhale, arms up. Pull them to center, maybe widen your stance. Go down to that squat. Maybe you have that block underneath you. Feel the fire. Pull in on your abs here. Feel it. I'm not going to make you do another boat, but if you want to do another boat, do a boat here. Feel one last as you journey from Fire Nation. You know I have to do it. From Fire Nation into the earth. And I like to do low boat, high boat, because I'm crazy, and this is how I like to work my abs. Wherever you are, Ooh. we're gonna go back to mountain. <laughs> so if you just did your yogi squat, you're coming back up. Ta-da, Earth Kingdom. This time, to focus on the earth, really feel the grounding. Lift up every toe and plant every toe. Feel the outside edges of your feet touching the ground. Feel your heels your big toe, the inside of your feet. Keep a little bend in your knee. Maybe even do a little squat, pushing the earth away from you. Shoulders back, remember? You're feeling the fire in your core, feeling the air in your breath. And of course, you've got the blood in your veins, so we'll count that as the water. <laughs> we're gonna start to slow down now. But first, we're gonna do just a little bit of combo. This is a little bit of burn with goddess. So taking a wide-legged stance, inhale, arms up to soccer goal posts, and do a little squat. This is goddess. You may notice that Toph does something very similar. A lot of them do right the stomp. So maybe do a little goddess stomp, keeping those shoulder blades back and down, feeling the power of the earth, actually pushing the earth away from you with each step. Doesn't it feel different? Just thinking about the connection to the earth. And then come back, feel that connection. Next, we're gonna do the earth block part. So for that, each one does that move where you swing, okay? So if you can combine your uppercut swing from the earth block with the stomp, huh, right? Channel the earth. Plus it makes a really cool sound when you stop it hard. Right? Feel the power. Also a little bit of that fire burn in your legs. Stop if you need to. Three, two, one. And wide legs. Exhale, wide leg and forward fold. Find a block here if you need to. So you're folding with your legs wide. Coming to rest, wherever it works for you, on the block, on the earth. Breathe here, let your head go. Shake it yes, shake it no. Breathe. If you want and you need it here, you can do those side lunges again, if it feels good. Find what works for you. If you wanna do a balance pose here, a headstand or a handstand, go for it. 
If you're with me, just breathe. Let it all go. All right. <laughs> now, use your abs again to lift yourself up. Really use your core here. Come back to mountain. Shake those legs out. That was it. Whew, that was the end of the burn. The Fire Nation has been vanquished, extinguished by the earth. And now we're just gonna come to settle. Okay. So, mountain pose. Feet hip width distance apart. Feel those toes connect to the ground again. Little bend in your knee. Shoulders back, palms out, head up, breathe. Maybe even pull your kneecaps up here. Engage, feel your core pull in. Tighten everything. And then let it go. We're gonna inhale, arms up. We're gonna do standing bananas, one of my favorites. So your hands are together in like a little prayer. You can do like a little grabbing and having the, thing, the, the index finger sticking out. So banana, you just shift to one side. Maybe swing in your hips out a little bit. Inhale up, exhale other side. And you can go as deep or shallow as you want. You can hold it if you want. This is a really big side stretch. We've done a lot of twists. And if you need to, you can widen your stance. Again, whatever works for you. Find those bananas. Tick-tocking from side to side. Keeping your knees bent, feel the earth here. As you cool down, pulling everything from your fingertips down to your toes. And then from here, exhale, hands down. Mountain pose. We're gonna go into our next standing balance pose. Again, have that wall or that chair handy if you need to. This is tree pose. Of course, earth has to have tree pose. So for that, again, shift your weight into your right foot. You can either do a kickstand with your foot, so you're just lifting up a little bit. You can place your foot on your lower leg or you can place it on your upper leg, but do not put it on your knee, that's not healthy. Keep a bend in your knee, don't lock it. Okay, that's tough, that's what makes this a challenge. And it also helps to strengthen your ankles and your legs. Wherever your tree is, find it. Your hands can go to heart center. They can extend like branches of the tree. They can even come behind you in reverse prayer or they can hold on to something for balance. There's no wrong way, it's your tree. Just like Bob Ross, we're all happy little trees. For additional challenge, you can try and close your eyes or sway in the breeze. Maybe the air element has come back full circle. This is very tough to do because you're moving your upper body and you're trying to hold steady. And for some reason, I'm doing very well at this today. So don't compare yourself to me. Find what works for you. And wherever you are, from here, if you wanted to, you could hinge forward and do one more warrior three, right? Kicking it back. You don't have to. It just feels good to me right now, so I'm doing it. Because guess what? My yoga, <laughs> you're all playing along, but you can find your yoga. And then maybe pull your knee in wherever you are. Maybe do a little open. Maybe you want to do a little dancer. It's again, your yoga. So any other balances that you want to do, or if you're like, dude, this is crazy riff, I like, Step down, shake out your feet. <laughs> That's all we're doing on this side. Again, the joy of yoga is having the options to do whatever works for you. So we're going to our left foot. Feel the earth connecting each toe, front, back, side, other side of your foot. Maybe going into that kickstand. You're going to notice balance is different on the other side. <laughs> How many bets on if I can do that same crazy thing I did on this side and on the other side? Find where you want it. Again, don't put your foot on your knee. Don't lock your knee. Coming first to prayer. And then finding what tree works for you. Shoulders back, head up, breathing. Again, maybe closing your eyes for challenge or maybe trying to flow that tree in the air. And then maybe you try and kick back into your warrior, or you stay in your tree, or you just stop, because that's all you can do. And if you're with me, maybe you kick your knee up and out and open, close, do a little dancer. Oop, there we go. <laughs> and wherever you are, finish up your balances, shake it out. And we're going to lower the 
ground. So again, if you want to do that squat one more time, inhale, arms up. Pull it in, exhale, come down, and hold that squat however you like. Keep holding, keep breathing. And that yogi squat for three, two, and one. Lower down. And this time we're going to be doing, um, we're just going to be going to our back. So if you want to do the pain with me one more time with boat, you can do boat or you can skip it and just lay on your back. We got our boat. Slowly lowering down. All the way. Whew. All right, we are going to stay on the ground <laughs> for the rest of this yoga practice. Nice work, everybody. Whew. I can feel the air flowing across my feet. I can feel it tickling my sweat. You now have all of the elements. Feel the earth underneath you. Feel the after effects of the fire. Again, feel the water sweat, the water blood, all that kind of stuff. If you got water, drink it. All right, so bring your knees up. Give yourself a hug. We're gonna do our twists here. If you don't like the one I'm offering, find your own twists. So first I'm just hugging and rolling and rocking and moving my knees around to release the back and the lower spine. This is great when you sit for a long time. And then come to stillness when you're ready. And we're gonna do twisted roots. So remember at the very beginning we did eagle. So you wanna make your eagle leg, so I'm putting right leg over left. Twist as many times as you want. And then plant your hands. I keep them wide like a T-pose. And then let them lower to the left. You might want to put a block or a pillow or something underneath your knees because you're twisted here. This is called twisted roots. Keep your shoulder blades down. Only go as far as you can go, but your feet are planted and you're twisting and then your legs are twisting too. So this is really opening up those hips. If this isn't for you, just have both of these come down. It's fine. It's your yoga. Do what works for you. Breathe. And then use your abs again to lift those twisted roots. Now we're going to exhale, switch it so your left leg is on top. And then let them lower to the other side. Again, finding a pillow or a block if you need it to put your knees on. Keeping the shoulder blades down. Maybe looking the opposite direction of your legs and breathe. Twisted roots, other side. Because again, we were that tree connecting to the earth. And then again, using your abs, bring them back up, untwist. Maybe a windshield wiper here. So you're planting your feet and just shifting those hips. And then moving your blocks out of the way. We're going to come into one bridge. So you're putting your feet down, again, near, near your hips. Your hands should almost be brushing your toes. Shoulder blades are back and down. Feel the connection to the earth here. Push with your shoulder blades, your hands, and your feet, and lift your hips just a little bit first, just to notice there's some space underneath your hips here. And then maybe lift further. You can use a block underneath you here. Again, I showed this in our block aids yoga. You can put it underneath your sacrum and just sit there so there's less effort. If you want to challenge, you can put the block between your knees, and that will help you to push your legs together, which gives you the strength to really hold. And if you want here and you feel strong, you can inhale, pushing your shoulder blades down and lift your arms. Feel your connection to the earth. There should be no pain in your neck or shoulders whatsoever. If it feels good, you can open your arms all the way reaching up here, but no neck pain, okay? And then wherever you are, if your hands are up, take them back down, slowly lower to the ground. A little different bridge, right? Okay. And again, if you just did a normal bridge, that is perfect. That bridge is your connection to the earth, right? Head, feet, arms, legs, all of it. So now we're going to go into Savasana, our final resting pose. You're going to kick your feet out. Take your arms open, palms down for grounding this time, all right? Palms down, feet wide. This is corpse pose, Savasana. Maybe lift your heels, your legs. Adjust the flesh underneath your hips, shoulders. Really have everything connect to the earth here. And if you have that block or a wall available, this is a great way to finish your grounding. You can put the blocks 
So your feet are pressing them like this. And that way your feet are grounded. If you have a wall, even better. Doing Savasana with your feet, <laughs> here we go, with your feet against the wall feels different. If your feet are against the wall, notice if this is good for you, that grounding of the feet, or if it's bad, don't do it. But maybe you do this grounded Savasana. Wherever you are, just relax fully. Make any final adjustments you need. And I'm gonna give you a few minutes of silence. I will call you back out in three minutes. During this time, your savasana, close your eyes, come back to your breath, maybe come back to your intention. Relax completely. And if any stray thoughts come by, acknowledge them and then let them flow like water underneath that bridge, the water that you channeled away, <laughs> or you could burn them with fire. You can exhale and just release them with air. Use the elements to fully relax. Welcome to your Savasana. If you want to stay here, you can. Stay as long as you need to rest. If you're with me, begin to deepen your breath, coming back to your body. Maybe wiggle your fingers and toes. Start to do little rolls of the wrists and ankles, noticing how your body feels after that elemental journey. And as you're ready, inhale, take your arms up, stretch like you're just waking up. And then roll to one side when you're ready and just stay here for a moment. This is the in-between, the fetal pose where you're comfortable and safe. Before journeying back into your world and exiting the avatar, the spiritual world, just remember that you can come back here anytime and thank yourself for being here. Now roll up, finding that comfortable seat, coming back maybe to your air ball. You can have your eyes closed or invite a gentle gaze wherever you are. Come back to your breath and your intention. Decide if you need to set a new intention or if the one that you made will work with you for the rest of your day. Whatever that intention is, take it with you. And we're gonna seal it the same way we did at the beginning of class. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, drawing palms to heart center. Two more breaths, one in. Exhale. And the last to seal your practice and set your intention going forward. Inhale, and let it all go. And 
raise your thumbs to your forehead, the center of knowledge and intuition, the light below the teacher in me. Thanks and honors the light below the teacher in all of you. I hope that you've enjoyed Avatar Yoga. Use these elements and find peace in your journey going forward. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Again, I am Riftwing Designs of Riftwing Designs at Riftwing Designs everywhere. You can find all of my videos on YouTube at Riftwing Designs. You can find my schedule on Facebook. I mostly post on Instagram. And of course, you can find me here on twitch.tv. Please like, subscribe, leave comments. I am looking forward to doing Halloween yoga next month. Can you believe it's gonna be spook season? So we're gonna do a special spooky session and then we're gonna do two new AIDS yoga sessions. So if you have not yet seen the block aid yoga or any of the others that I have done, they're all on YouTube, Riftwing Designs. We're gonna be doing weighted blankets and foam roller yoga in November and December. They're gonna be really fun. You're gonna to have to have something similar to those to be able to do the aid yoga, unfortunately. So if you don't have one, maybe you can find one to borrow or maybe it's worth investing in, but that will be the next three sessions. So we've got two aid yoga and of course Halloween coming up. So with that, again, I thank you all for being here. I'm looking forward to sharing more with you. Again, I'm also on at The Cosplay and Yogis on Instagram and on TikTok. You can find me and my troop over there anytime to provide more yoga advice and funny adventures as we move through the fall season. So with that, thank you, thank you, thank you once more. Best wishes, and I will see you next month. Take care, everyone.